check this out. This is from uh, Trojan Feast from Joshua Gutchins. The page 78. This is a little excerpt from it about Bigfoot. Marsley more common are descriptions of Sasquatch bringing bits of raw meat to captives, usually in conjunction with fruits or vegetables. The sensational Russian newspaper Pravda uh, reported in 2004 that St. Petersburg resident Oksana uh, Terlitske was held captive by a Bigfoot or Yeti for over a year where she was forced to copulate with the beast and was brought a diet of berries, fruit, m mushrooms, eggs, and raw meat. The aforementioned tale of Warren and Warren Scott and Albert Ostman, notwithstanding, women are usually the victims of Sasquatch kidnapping, often reports report salacious motives for their abduction. In a 1954 article for Liberty Magazine, early Bigfoot researcher John W. Burns told the perhaps apocryph apocryphal story of Seraphine Long, uh, a Chehalis um, Native, American, Native American girl who was uh, claimed to have been held kept a prisoner by a, a large hairy hominid. The 17-year-old Long was walking home one day when an enormous furry hand snatched her up, sealing her eyes shut with tree gum, an important detail that would be addressed in a later chapter. The carrying her and carrying her to a cave inhabited by a young Sasquatch and his parents. Long eventually became pregnant with the creature's child and begged to be returned to her people. Her captor finally obliged, but not before re reapplying the tree gum. She gave birth that evening in her village, the infant living only a few hours. During her year-long imprisonment, Long said, that she was fed well. Some reports indicating her diet consisted of roots, fish, and meat. This account is strikingly similar to the early 20th century tale of Buddhist nun, Noma Dima, who was returned home, who was returning home and lifted bodily by a large hairy figure. During her stay with a yeti, she was not only brought berries and other wild fruits to eat, but small frogs as well. On one occasion, the beast smashed open a bull's head, and the two partook of the animal's brain. When she came forward with her account in 1968, Dima explained how the Yeti released her after siring a child with her in a par parallel to Seraphine Long. Mother and son returned to the village and cohabited peacefully with the citizens for a time, at least until a series of crop failures. The um, aspiration the aspirations were cast as upon, excuse me, the aspirations, not aspirations, the aspirations were cast upon the son, thought to be cursed. The father arrived to reclaim his child. Dima objected, and the Yeti ripped the hybrid boy to shreds. Uh, and then that's, um, I don't know if there's really a correlation with Bigfoot or not, but he feels so. Because it doesn't say specifically a Bigfoot or a, was involved with this, but in a unique case reported in Lafayette Advisor in 1889, a Georgia farmer noticed that his fence rails, hogs, and corn had 
began to mysteriously disappear over the course of the summer. When he, f when he finally discovered huge bear tracks leading into the swamp, he resolved to lead the party to track down the animal. While they did not find the culprit, they did find on a raised island in the swamp an enormous pen constructed of missing fence rails. Inside were the missing hogs fattened on the stolen corn. The hogs were recovered and sold to a local butcher who passed the cuts to the area customers. As with most entity food, the pork was sweet, so much so that an attempt was made to re replicate its juicy richness with other hogs and to no avail. So we have uh, several accounts here of women being abducted and uh, forced to have intercourse with Bigfoot. And of course then there's the food involved as well. So. Can you imagine it being forced to partake of an animal's brains? Pretty crazy stuff. That was stuff's pretty crazy. You're going to try. Go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind.